I guess it started one morning. I was sitting in church, uh, just a regular Sunday morning, and um, the pastor was talking about missions and long term and commitment and all of these kinds of things. And I guess normally that would that would impact me a little bit, but this time it was it was different somehow. It was like God was pounding on my chest, and I just got this huge smile on my face. And I was ready. I just started looking at my life and asking myself what would it look like for me to be on mission all the time and devote my life to that and become a missionary, I guess. I remember growing up in church that missionaries would come visit. I was just always captivated by their stories and I knew that there was a, a world that was so much bigger than my backyard and that there were people in that world who needed to hear about Jesus. And I just, I've always wanted to get out there and have the ability to, to tell people about Jesus and see that transform lives. I just kept hearing the same words, planting seeds, nurture, water, tend, person by person, life by life. Don't wait, you're ready, just go. I felt like I was kind of waiting around, like, is, is this something that God would call me into? And, and when would that happen? Where would I go? What would it look like? And then all of a sudden, it was like this lightning bolt, like, there it is. There it is. It's, I mean, it seemed almost obvious. Some help? Yeah, I just uh, gotta put this in there. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You wanna grab the top? All right. I'll... My name is Bradley Martin, and I am oh, yeah. answering yeah. God's call to go. And I am a missionary. So he calls us to go, but sometimes that's just right next door, right? Um, and if you look at the news, I mean, our world is falling apart. We got ISIS. Uh, we, you guys prayed yet last week about South Carolina and the, and, and the torment that's going on there and our country and everything. If you just get on Facebook, you see there's lots and lots of things falling apart. Um, and, and I like what Max Lucado said just about being anxious and, 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 and approaching this in prayer. It says, it may seem that the world is changing fast, but is it really? Uh, the headlines may announce a decision of the Supreme Court, but the action of our Supreme God, God are unaltered. He is still the creator, blessed forever, uh, Romans 1.25. And Hebrews 13.8, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's replace our anxious thoughts with prayerful ones. And everything but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. Now is the time for prayer and faith. Something good will come out of all of this. Maybe now we can have the discussion where we need to have it, face to face, in our neighborhoods, over dinner tables. Perhaps the hate-filled words will subside and clear thinking will gain traction. The shouting will diminish and the heartfelt dialogue will increase. Now is the time for us all to pursue the highest ideals of our master, to love God, love our neighbors, and above all, be anxious for nothing. Um, if we want to reach out in our community, that's where it starts, right? Right next door, just like he did. Right next door, helping our neighbors out, um, loving them. And so today we're going to talk a lot about community, um, how, what it means to reach out in that community, um, and, and how we can be a better neighbors for those people. And so we want to kind of figure out what do you think community means to you? And if I can have my beautiful wife, Amber, come up uh, for two reasons. One, so I can introduce her. Um, this is another part of Act of Grace, but two, if I wrote, you wouldn't be able to read my handwriting. So, um, <clears throat> here you go. Uh, today we're just going to try to, feel free to just shout out some things that you think that embodies a community. It could be things you would like to see in a community, it could be um, attributes, it could be things you've seen in other areas. Um, one thing we could go ahead and start the list with is diversity, right? Diversity is something that happens in a community, good or bad. What other thoughts do you guys have? This is your chance to shout something out in church, by the way, so just go ahead and just shout it out. <clears throat> what does community look like to you? Mm -hmm. 
What else? Support, it's a good one. Go ahead and put loving, hopefully. Loving is good. We'll put that on there too. What do you want to see in, in your community? I'm sorry? Accountability. Very good. Awareness. Yeah, very good. Any really big words to test your spelling capabilities? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry? Full? Full? P-O-L, community? Yes, I like it. That is very important. Yeah. A pool, like to swim in. <laughs> very good. <laughs> very good. <clears throat> well, God's... Uh, you can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. God, if you think of more later, let us know. But God's plan was... Um, was for a perfect community, one that was complete, whole, and unified. He, he, he envisioned this community of Eden, right, where um, he made all creation, and it was perfect, and it was lovely, and it was good, and it, and it was a place where we could um, have community and communion. And ever since then, um, because of sin, sin destroyed the community. And this is kind of what I think it would look like, right, just a gigantic Godzilla, you know, coming in and destroying everything. And, and, and that's happened, that, that since sin has entered in, um, Bad things have happened. But within all that badness and all that horrible and, and, and non-communal things, um, there's always a little bit of good left, right? Like, you know, for one, Godzilla can still have s'mores, right? Might have a little few s'mores right there. That'd be good. Um, there's always some goodness. So if you just look around around the world, right? Um, last night I got on Facebook, and ISIS has killed another 200 people, um, women and children overseas. And that's a horrible thing, um, and it's destructive. But God is still working. Um, and through groups like IDES, International Disaster Emergency Service, who has refugee camps in the area, um, every time the ISIS does anything bad, people flee those towns, those villages, and for the first time, the best time in ever history, more Muslims are being converted to Christianity now than ever before. Thousands of people every day come to know the Lord because of that horrible action. It's horrible, but God is still working in that. He's using the bad things to, to uh, make good. Uh, my roommate in college, um, 33, he was 33. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we went down and, and, and to his funeral. He had passed away. He had two girls and um, a wife. He was my roommate at Christian Student Fellowship. And it was a horrible thing. That community has fallen apart. They're, they're, they're heartbroken for Janelle and, and, and all that's left behind. But on the way back, Amber was like, it was really cool still to see the community of Christian Student Fellowship coming around Janelle and still uniting after all this time. We've been, came from all over the world, um, in Miami, different places, um, still doing ministry. We came around them and, and united them. So God is still working and he's still uniting. One of our main areas that we work in is called the Ashley Motel, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, but it's a hotel on 40, and there's about 30 homeless families that live there, and it is uh, broken. These are families that have lost everything, and, and it's a broken community. Um, and, you know, they come, here with, they come there with nothing, and we try to start rebuilding them and getting back on the path. Um, but even there, there's glimmers of hope, and there's light at the end of the tunnel, and you can see that God still cares. So even though the community is broken, he's still working, he's still uniting, and he still cares for those people. And so community, if you look at it, the actual definition is a unified body of individuals with common character and common interests who share joint ownership and participate in something, okay? And so when you look at the church, hopefully that is true with the church, that, that, that we are a community of bodies of believers. It would be just like the first church in Acts, how they came together, and if there was ever a need, um, they would meet that need. And so there's two essential ingredients there that you find in that church of Acts. One is all the believers were together and had everything in common. So they came together regularly, just like you guys are coming together regularly as well. And they had a common ground or something that they could unite them. The church in Acts is a great example because they had persecution at every angle. They were persecuted. They were, um, you know, in great distress and their communities were broken and they had to come together to find that common ground um, as well. Um, and so today we're going to look at uh, four elements you can learn from that community particularly and use today world, whether it be in your neighborhood, in this church, or, or you know, anywhere around the world. And these are four important elements of a healthy and functioning uh, Christian community. Whoops, sorry, I think I might have went the wrong direction. <clears throat> nope, it's not there. That's not a big deal. We'll just go on. 
So uh, the first one is extreme service, right? Um, in John uh, chapter 13, verse 4 through 5, um, you're, you're going to see uh, the, um, the, basically the washing of the disciples' feet. And I'll just pull that up right quick, no problem. Um, and, and when I say extreme service, um, it doesn't have to be something that is like, you know, way hard to do or anything like that at all. This can be something that is just... Um, a little bit out of the ordinary. I thought about washing everybody's feet today, but I thought that would not be a really good idea. Uh, so we're going to pass that. But um, in John chapter 3, verse 4, if I can get it to pull in. Um, so he, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel um, around his waist. And then in verse 5, here, maybe. It's not pulling in. That's okay. He, he then proceeded to wash his, his disciples' feet. Um, and, and so from an everyday standpoint, these disciples got to see Jesus do extreme things, right? Things that were un, out of the ordinary or things that didn't necessarily uh, fit in with what their comfort zone was. He was able to go and, and, and heal the sick and the blind and stuff. So in this particular day, this was something that was meant for a servant, but he decided to go out and, and do it himself. It was extreme because he um, did something that was abo- you know, below him and he, something that was needed. And so in an extreme case, it's just any kind of service that we can do to be able to uh, help those people in need in that time. Um, it could be finding a neighbor that needs help, like the, the video with the planting of the tree. It could be uh, listening to someone who just wants to share their story, which is so big. Or it could be going out of your comfort zone and going to the place like at the Ashley. We're so thankful for the reunion group that is, is, is there with us monthly and can be able to help out um, in any way that they can, and we thank you for that. Uh, one particular case was the last week, I think, um, Tom was able to talk to a man named Charlie. Now, Charlie is a little bit rough and has been there for almost not 10 months, and I've gotten him to talk like eight words in, in like 10 months, so it's not really, he's not very social. Um, but for some reason, something you did, I don't know what it was, but uh, you really got him to open up a little bit. Well, the next day, I had to go back with the college group and pass out clothes, and here comes Charlie, which is kind of surprising because he doesn't come around a lot, and I couldn't get the man to shut up. I don't know what you did, but he just kept talking and talking. So I just listened, right? I just listened to his story um, and just let him, let him um, share with all the different things that is going on there. And it was because of that act of service that really um, he saw a difference um, from you guys in that church. But he started telling me about why he was homeless, which was because he had to, um, uh, he had a really good paying job. He had a nice house. He sold it all to be able to go down to uh, Virginia and, and open up a business with his cousin. Well, things didn't work out too well. When he came back about a year or two later, he really wasn't able to get that job again. And he said, I've just been stuck here this whole time. I can't save up enough money to get my truck license test again. It's really expensive. And we just kept talking and we just kept talking. But then I thought, you know, maybe we should ask the next question. How much do you think that's going to be for you to be able to get that test? And he said, oh, it's just really expensive. I just can't do it. I was like, no, just tell me how much it's going to be. And it was, he said, okay, well, it would be about $200. I was like, okay. Um, I didn't tell him at the time, but... Active Grace can totally get your $200 test taken care of. And for $200, he would be able to completely change his life around and be able to move on. And it was all because of an act of extreme act of service from you guys. So we really appreciate that. Just as a comparison, some of our families that we get from, our, from a car into um, a housing situation costs us about $4,000 to get them from their home, get them a job that they can actually do and can keep in, into that transition. It's about $4,000. And so for $200, he's already got a job lined up that he knows he can do and he can completely break out of that poverty. And so that's because people were willing to serve um, changes the life in that community. The second thing we need to do is we need to love, right? We need to love one another. Um, in John chapter 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commands, which First off, sounds easy, but when you really get into it, it it's hard, right? In 1421, uh, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will too love them and show myself to them. And then in 1 John uh, 323, it says his command is to love one another as he commanded us. Um, and so this loving one another, when things are going right and the community is really unified, that seems easy. But when it's broken, it's hard, right? Just look at, you know, like, again, the South Carolina thing and these, the stuff that's coming out of there. Like, he said that he might not have done the shooting because of their kindness and their love to him. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great testimony to that church and those followers of Christ. And just the way they're responding to him um, in, in court and just, it's just a great example 
of their love for him. Sometimes I look at community and I think community is kind of like um, that extended Thanksgiving with your extended family where you drive and drive and drive for miles and you see people you didn't even know were your family members. And uh, some of them are, you know, I mean, you just have nothing in common with them at all. And you're going to say, I got to spend a whole weekend with these people. And at the end, you got to take a family picture, right? And so you just got to love them, right? Because they're part of your family. But sometimes that is hard. But God calls us to do that anyway. We have to love one another even when uh, we ne- maybe not have anything in common. The thing that we need to focus on is being together, right? Like they did in Acts, and finding that common ground as well. Um, the third thing is to support. So we need to make sure we're serving our community, loving our community, and then supporting one another here within this, this body of community. And so this is more of an internal thing, but we have to support each other. Uh, whatever our vision or our hope or our love is for each other, we have to support each other in that. Um, in 1 John three sixteen through 18, it says, this is how we know what love is. Uh, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our, our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and see his brother's need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with action and in truth. And so we must support each other in that. That was the thing that that first church in Acts did very, very well, is that they would support each other. They would sell things. They would do things. They, whatever it took to support the ministry work forward, we, have, we must do that. So we must love. We must serve. We must support and then finally, we must pray for one another. In Ephesians six eighteen, it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. We, we have an opportunity to pray to the God of the universe for these problems that are happening in our communities and our world. We must do that. We must go to Him and pray. And we must be able to pray for those around us. It's interesting, when you first meet a, a, a family uh, that's, you know, in poverty in this area, whether it be at the Ashley or at the Value Place or in their car or wherever it is, um, sometimes you meet some people that are pretty rough. Uh, we've met um, neo-Nazis and drug dealers and all kinds of stuff going on, um, and they're really rough, and their language is rough, and, they're, and they're at, their lifestyle is rough, and why wouldn't it be? They're living in sin, right? They're living in this complete brokenness every day. Um, and so we start talking to them, and the first thing we do is we just listen to their story. We just say, hey, you know, we're here, and we would like to, you know, and they're thinking we're just there to give a handout, which is nice, but really it's to kind of lift them up, break that cycle of poverty, and just listen to them. Well, the second time we come back, if, the, if we come back the second time, they already know immediately there's a difference between us and some of the other groups, because a lot of the times groups just come in, they give them stuff, and they leave. But they already start thinking, okay, this is interesting. And so they start telling us more of their story and more things going on. But by the th- second or third time, if we say, this, all we have to do is just stop and say, man, I'm so sorry about your, about your loss or your story. Can I pray for you? And it's like immediately everything changes. I don't know if it's because then they think, oh, no, I've cussed in front of a Christian. I don't know if that's what it is or not. <laughs> but it's like immediately it changes because they think, wow, you're not just here. You actually care. You want to pray. And, and a lot of them do not have relationships with God at all. Um, but that just mentioning of prayer to them shows them that you truly care going forward. Um, for us to be a community that reaches out uh, as a reunion church, reaches out into their community and makes a true difference. We have to serve people. We have to love them. We have to support them, and we have to pray uh, for them as much as possible. Um, and I feel like you guys are doing a great job at that already. I think, I think uh, if you were going to look at what community is, the caringness, I don't know about the pool, where we're going to get a pool at, but we'll look at awareness, accountability, loving, diversity, support, community. Um, obviously, you're serving, you're already loving, and you're praying, and you're supporting and so I would say community is Reunion Church, right? You guys are a community. And yes, your community, here again, this is why Amber wrote all this because you can't read my writing. <clears throat> your community might be changing, right? There might be a lot of things going on. It might be changing. Um, but you guys are a community. And if you guys remember to pray and support each other and continue to serve and love, you guys are going to do great things. You already have. Act of Grace, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but Act of Grace would not even be anywhere close to where we are right now if it wasn't for Reunion Church. Um, the, the, the love and support you guys have given us has been amazing, and we appreciate that. And so you guys are a community, and you're doing all these things. And so for the next couple of weeks, all we can do is just encourage you to, to do a little more, right? 
by, you know, just next two weeks, pick a time when you can serve somebody in your community, maybe your neighbor you never talked to. Pick a time where you can find a way to love somebody, either here within the body or outside. Pick a time to just daily pray for the people in the Reunion Church, and pick a time to support those people. If you guys do that over the next two weeks, God will move in our community and in your lives. Well, thank you.